Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Valero Solohub. Join me now to talk about the treatment of Ukrainian soldiers who fought in the war in eastern Ukraine is the certified prosthetist who came from Canada to Ukraine on a medical mission, Mr. Chad Nielsen. Mr. Nielsen, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you very much for having me. So, Mr. Nelson, I understand you came um, here. Uh, this is the second time, the second mission you're here with, and um, it, it has a dual purpose. On the one hand, you are working with Ukrainian medics. You are training the Ukrainian medics on how to treat the the the, the loss of limbs, uh, which some of the soldiers have suffered in the eastern Ukraine. But also, you are also treating some of the soldiers uh, directly. So, so tell us what exactly you're doing. That's correct. Uh, this is the second mission. This is my third trip here. The first mission was last year in Kiev, um, a group from uh, uh, United States specialists, and I'm Canadian. Uh, we treated, I think, five or six uh, individuals with multiple devices, and I think we had about 10 or 12 Ukrainian specialists that joined us for the two weeks. And we learned from them as well as they learned from us, but we tried to demonstrate some of the techniques we use um, in North America and a year later we're going to do another two weeks it's essentially the same group and we're going to do two weeks in Lviv and I think we're going to see eight eight clients I don't know um, much about their background yet and we're going to have 15 uh, specialists from around Ukraine and hopefully they can learn uh, from us and we can work together and we can learn from them and uh, also fit some devices uh, successfully Mr. Nelson, the, 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 the war in eastern Ukraine has been raging for almost two years now. Uh, obviously, in the beginning, Ukraine, it was understandable. Ukrainian medics were not prepared for this type of wounds. They, most of them, they've never seen the, the, the combat wounds. But now the, 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 the time has passed. They should have upgraded their skills. They should have, they should have gotten more and more knowledge. Why are these missions still necessary? Uh, just the sheer number of guys who were injured and the complex injuries of uh, gunshot wounds and explosions. Um, even the United States uh, veterans, uh, military rehabilitation, we're still learning every day. Everyone's different. Um, it's, a, it's a complex system. Um, you know, and that's another thing we talk about here is, is more of the holistic approach to rehabilitation, specifically with prosthesis, um, occupational therapy, physical therapy. Um, psychological issues that some of the guys might have. Um, so we look at we look at everything, but it's there's still guys being injured every day. I think I've seen some improvement um, of the local skills. Um, you know, it's been a year since since the project, so maybe I'll learn a little more uh, when we see what's going on in Lviv. Mr. Nelson, when you were talking both to Ukrainian doctors and to Ukrainian soldiers, uh, what are you hearing from them in, in, in terms of uh, how does this war affect them? Um, you know, interestingly enough, last fall I came and spoke at Kiev Regional Gen uh, General Hospital on uh, rehabilitation, and there was physicians from all, the from U.S., from Israel, to share their uh, specialties with, and the Ukrainian doctors were really um, open about saying, hey, we've never seen a lot of these types of injuries from you know high impact uh, explosions, gunshot wounds, multiple limb loss. So it was great to share the information, and they you know they want to be able to to treat better. I specifically spoke about right from right from uh, you know gun battle, right from injury in in the field, right up to to. Uh, modern day I did a case study on a guy so I shared that as far as the rehabilitation of how a US soldier goes from injury in the battlefield to present day I shared that and I think that um, Ukraine doesn't have that kind of comprehensive rehab system um, countrywide yet but they're working on it what about the soldiers well, you, you, you obviously are talking to to many soldiers who lost their limbs um, in, 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 in combat mm -hmm. Um, how, how for, again, from, from what you're hearing from them, how are they dealing with this? Uh, the guys we met last year, I followed up with a couple of them in the fall. So we fit them in the spring, I followed up with them in the fall. They seem to be doing pretty good. They're young guys, they've adapted to life. One of them is still active uh, duty military. I think he does more training and preparing guys to go to front line. Um, there's going to be a couple of guys in Lviv that we'll follow up with. It's been a year. Um, you know, every guy has been different so so far. From psychological, emotional standpoint, what do you think helps these guys move on? Uh, getting back to a regular life, 
if they can, if possible, depending on how injured they are. If they are not so bad, like uh, you know, the one guy I mentioned, Vlad, he's back to to work in the military and seems quite happy. The times I've I've spoken with him, um, the other two guys I haven't talked to, they had a little more severe uh, limb loss, um, but they seemed okay at the time of the fitting. You know, they had support from family and friends, and uh, but moving on, just getting back to a regular life, I think is is important for a lot of guys. You mentioned the, the rehabilitation process which um, um, Ukraine should put in place for all these soldiers who come back from the, the combat zone in eastern Ukraine. How, how long do, will it take for, for, for Ukraine, in your, from your uh, experience, from your perspective, to put in place from what you're seeing right now? That's a tough question. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It would take maybe years to, to get to the level of what the United States at, but they've been in active war for 15, 14, 15 years right now, and every month guys are coming home injured, severely injured. So they've, you know, they've had a long, you know, they've been in a lot more combat, you know, combat recently than, than Ukraine has. So, um, you know, I shared with, with, with a story of a, a soldier, and, you know, he took me through the various stages of rehabilitation. And, you know, he lived in a military hospital in the United States for three or four months, got all his surgeries taken care of. But the whole time he was there, they were constantly working on his fitness, uh, his strength, his range of motion, his diet. It's, it's a real um, specific way. These guys are laying in bed for, lo for long periods of time, and you can really lose a lot of muscle mass, range of motion, just everything can go. But he said that was the most... Um, important part of his prosthetic rehabilitation was actually the pre-prosthetic training, keeping him fit, keeping him happy, you know, giving him everything he needed, and then he was ready to be fit. From your experience, how long does it, this, this process take to, to rehabilitate a soldier, both from f physical standpoint, but also emotional? I know that all the cases are very different, yeah, but if, if you could provide like the, the range. I, I can't, it would just be a guess. And uh, I haven't, you know. Well, I haven't, your part, it would be educate a guess. No, I, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't worked with that many soldiers where I could have a really good guess. Every guy's different. Uh, you know, young guys can rebound sometimes, and sometimes they're maybe too young to rebound. It seems like they're, they're still not fully uh, you know, fully matured as adult men and they're going off to these things, so. Mr. Nelson, what are the main um, steps the Ukrainian government should take in order to take care of these wounded soldiers? They need to get a comprehensive plan of rehabilitation from, you know, from time of, of amputation, whether it happens in, in front line or whether it's planned. Then the, then the pre-prosthetic step, the prosthetic step, and then the, the therapy after. You know, big thing about, about prosthesis is you need to be trained correctly by a physical therapist for lower limb or an occupational therapist for upper limb. Um, activities of daily living, how to live independently, how to know when there's something wrong when you're, with your prosthesis, to go see your prosthetist, go see the local guy, Kiev State Prosthetic Workshop or, or one of the private guys, whoever your, your prosthetist is, you, you have a relationship with him and it, uh, you know, to take care of yourself. How developed is, um, and excuse me, maybe for improper word, the business of uh, prosthetics here in, in Ukraine? Because, uh, again, uh, the war has been raging for a year and a half now. Uh, a lot of guys are losing their limbs. There is a big demand. So um, is, is there sufficient um, infrastructure and, and, and equipment? Uh, the shops, the, the few shops I've been in, yeah, the equipment is there and the... The, the ideas are there, the knowledge is there. I just don't think the experience is, has been there, but like you alluded to before, they're getting there. They're having a couple of years of fitting guys. I think from what I've seen, there, there could be, and I could be wrong, from what I've seen, there's a long gap, it seems to me, like when a guy is ready for a prosthesis to when he actually gets it. And the longer that goes, the harder it is for another change. You can learn to Why, why is this gap? I'm not sure. That I haven't that I haven't figured out if it's if it's the funding um, that's not in place or just the administrative isn't streamlined. It also can be on the side of people who aren't, you, you know, they might live in a in a village and not have access to prosthetic care. They have to travel. There, there's a lot of you know variables that could exist. Mr. Nelson, what is the main message which you are bringing to the Ukrainian doctors who have to treat? wounded soldiers on a daily basis? 
Uh, to the doctors or to prosthetists that, like me, the guys fitting? Both to doctors and prosthetists. Uh, just to, you know, I'll speak more, I'm not a doctor, so I'll speak more to the prosthetists that it's um, just practice and listen to what the guys need and, and make adjustments. It's okay to take your time. It's pr fitting a prosthesis, there isn't a start and a stop. It's a journey and it, it, it's going to be a lifetime journey. So it's not like you get to one point, you stop and it's over. It's a continuous process. Mr. Nielsen, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us. We were discussing the challenges the Ukrainian doctors face when fitting the prosthetics to the Ukrainian soldiers who got wounded in the eastern Ukraine with a certified prosthetist from Canada, Mr. Chad Nielsen. I'm Valerio Sulhub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.